morning all. And here is my uh, OLED wristwatch wearable project with the new addition of the NRF data transceiver. And I'm happy to report that uh, after about three days of messing about, it's finally working. So here are my four data fields. The first one is a one or a zero, and that's sent out by the transmitter to tell whether or not it actually succeeded in sending the data packet. And I'm now getting a constant one. So the transmitter is saying, I'm succeeding in sending data packets. Uh, the next two fields are just random data sent out by um, the transmitter from its two analog ports. And if I just switch hands for a minute and touch the analog ports, the analog pins, you can see that those numbers change. So that's analog data, random data being sent out. And the third field is my integer. And you can see now that the integer is counting up reliably in ones. Now it's counting up slowly because I want to transmit the packet from the transmitter slowly. You can see that in my transmit program, um, I've now put a delay of 250 milliseconds. And previously I wasn't able to do that. Anything uh, 10 milliseconds and above, the transmitter just shut down, it wouldn't transmit. Well now it's transmitting completely reliable with this 250 milliseconds delay. So basically it's going around this loop very slowly, once every quarter of a second, probably a bit more than that, because of the uh, the rest of the overhead of the code. So that's a result. Completely reliable data transmission to the receiver now, displayed on the OLED. There's the receiver, there's the transmitter. Okay, it's not very far away, but I have done range tests. Now these little modules without the external antenna do have a limited range. Um, so we're transmitting from the transmitter one there to the receiver one over there. But complete reliability. So how was this fixed? Well, I found this. It's a blog called Maniacal Bits. And uh, it's run by a chap called Greg Copeland. And in April 2013, he put up this uh, blog entry, new RF24 driver release, a fork. So this is uh, an alteration, a modification of the original Maniac Bug RF24 driver, but with significant improvements. And I'll just quickly go through some of these. So you can see their auto acknowledgement retry bug fix. But this was the one that really caught my eye. Reliability improvements. Following each write, and that's the right function, the radio was explicitly powered down by the driver. I classify the previous behavior as a bug. In order to improve reliability informants, right no longer powers down the radio. And I thought, this is it. That's what's going wrong. It's the fact that the radio is being powered down after a write that's causing me to be unable to increase the delay between write calls. Now, there's a few other bits and bobs here, and it's well worth a read of this. I'll put a link uh, to this blog in the description. But here is the fork uh, for the code. It's github.com forward slash gcopeland forward slash rf24. And it's simply a case of deleting the rf24 library from your library folder and then installing this one. Now, it looks virtually identical. It's, uh, you've got to be careful because it looks so similar, it's difficult to tell them apart. But this one works and the original one doesn't. Now I take my hat off to Maniac Bug who wrote the original RF24 but his library does contain these errors and uh, Greg Copeland's library does fix them and it's important to know that. Now before I found this solution I did have a wade through Nordic Semiconductor's NRF24 L01 plus datasheet and there is this state diagram and it shows uh, the various states that you can go into. Here's the TX mode, and it shows that the path from TX mode, the recommended path, is to standby one, then back to setting up the TX mode, going back into TX mode, back to standby one. And what Greg Copeland is saying is that in the original library, it went from TX mode 
to power down and that that was where the problem lay. But uh, this is a pretty big data sheet. This is 78 pages of, uh, of data sheet and I didn't really want to have to wade through the whole thing just to find out uh, what was going wrong with my transmissions. Anyway, I'm very pleased that I found a solution and that I can continue to use this extremely simple transmit program. I'm going to put this uh, transmit code uh, in as a comment so that you can see just how simple it is. And in essence, there are just three steps, essentially. Uh, in setup, you do a radio begin and a radio open writing pipe. And in your loop, you do a radio write. It's really that simple. Now my receiver code is a bit more messy, the code that's in this 3.3 uh, volt Arduino Pro Mini and that's because I haven't really got my um, OLED code properly functionized, properly optimized yet. But if someone does want to see it then I'm quite happy to put that in uh, as a comment. But it is a bit of a mess, I warn you now. But that is good news. That means that this particular project, the wearable data display device, can move forward now because my data transmissions are completely reliable. And uh, just to prove a point, I've put in my transmitter loop here, a delay of a thousand milliseconds, so that's a one second delay. And on the OLED display, we're getting one second gaps between each packet transmission. Now all of that data, all four fields, and there could be a lot more than four fields of course, are being transmitted in that one single packet. It's just that I'm firing it off from the transmitter once per second.